Are you getting ready to list your house for sale? Maybe you've got a bunch of people telling you their unsolicited advice on what you should do. Well then, I'm glad you stopped by my channel because I'm gonna give you the what's what. Don't fall prey to any of these common seller mistakes in your home selling journey. Hi there, my name is Emily Farber and I'm a realtor here in the greater Iowa City area. I create YouTube videos all about real estate and the Iowa City Metro to help people just like you make smart decisions when it comes to buying, selling, and relocating here in the Iowa City area. Since you're here to watch a video about selling your house, you should probably download my free seller's guide. I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description box down below this video. If you're watching this on your phone, just tap the title of this video and that description box will pop right open. You'll also find all of my contact information down there if you decide you'd like to talk with me personally about selling your house. I would love to chat with you and see if my real estate services would be a good fit for you. Do you remember when you were a kid and quicksand seemed like a very serious problem? Well, these five home selling myths are total seller quicksand. Don't step into them or you may find yourself up to your eyeballs in trouble before you know it. Myth number one, selling a house is easy in this market and I can do it myself and save a bunch of money. Well, <laughs> as someone who has sold a lot of houses, both for sale by owner and as a realtor, I can tell you that sometimes it goes smoothly and sometimes it doesn't. The sticky part of this is that you never know if it's going to go easy or hard until you are in the thick of it. Just like any other professional service that you hire done, be it a construction contractor, a mechanic, an attorney, even a hairstylist, you are paying for that person's expertise and skill in helping you achieve your end goal. When you hire a realtor, know that part of that expense is for their expertise in handling tricky issues, their deep set of contacts for solving problems, and their skills in keeping the transaction on the rails all the way to the closing table when you get that money in your hand. A lot of what a realtor does you might not even know about because we try to keep as much worry off your plate as possible. As a high performing realtor, one of my goals is to keep my clients' transactions as seamless and stress-free as possible. A home sale transaction is a awfully large amount of money to be stumbling through not knowing what you're doing. But believe it or not, I've been involved in a lot of transactions throughout the years with FISBO sellers who end up repeatedly asking me, me, what to do, despite the fact that I'm representing the buyers because they don't know, they don't have any professional guide there to help them. That attorney that their FISBO company uses for closing, he or she's not gonna help them negotiate the deal. He or she's not gonna evaluate multiple offers for their merit or advise them through the inspection and remedy phase or pull strings to get things done with impossible deadlines but a realtor will. Beyond the skills needed to manage the transaction, a skilled realtor will have obvious marketing savviness with staging, professional photography, videography, and access to the largest pool of active buyers. A realtor has access to the MLS, which is a tool we pay as agents to use that is an incredibly powerful resource. And it's the mechanism with which your property will be placed in front of the greatest population of active buyers out there. If you're considering hiring a realtor, make sure you choose a good one. I deal with agents all day, every day, and I can tell you there are all sorts. If you're looking for some advice on how to choose a great realtor, check out this video I made a while back, but finish this video first and then go watch that one. Number two, myth number two, I should just price my home high to see what happens. After all, I need some wiggle room. No, no you should not, unless of course you also want to shoot yourself in the foot just to see what happens. But I can tell you already what will happen in both cases, you'll regret it. 
Overpricing your home means that your most ideal buyers, the people who are out there right now just waiting for a house like yours to come along, will pass it by because your price is crazy. They may come take a look, but more often than not, they will not write an offer because your price is just out of line. They're going to tell their agent that they'll wait for you to come to your senses and lower the price. But here's the sad part for you, they don't actually wait. Another house is going to come along that fits their needs just as well and is priced appropriately, and they're gonna jump on the other house. Your house is forgotten and becomes old news. You lose all the momentum and desirability that should have been yours as a new listing. You're gonna find yourself needing a series of price reductions on your stale listing, and buyers will see that as a sign of weakness and wonder, what's wrong with your house? You're probably going to end up selling for less than if you would have just been realistic about your price in the first place and the entire experience is going to take so much more time and be so much more frustrating than it ever needed to be. Myth number three, the first offer was pretty good so I'm gonna wait for a better one. Ooh, be careful with this kind of thinking. Like I mentioned previously, when you first list your house on the market, you have that bell of the ball mojo working in your favor. You'll get the greatest number of showings the first week on the market, and many of those buyers who schedule a showing to take a look are serious because they have been out there waiting and waiting for the right house to come along they are likely going to write you a really nice offer because experience has already taught them the painful lesson of you snooze, you lose. Often, your first offer is your best offer, especially when it comes in close to your target. This is your opportunity to wield your power as a new listing with an eager buyer and negotiate those terms to even better suit your needs and wants. Your negotiation power as a seller, however, decreases the longer your property is on the market because everybody can see your days on market ticking upward. Don't forget, time is money. You could be looking at weeks or months of inconvenience trying to keep that house show ready. The expenses involved like mortgage payments, homeowners insurance, HOA dues, especially if you've already moved out, not to mention the hassle of maintaining the property, keeping the grass mowed, the snow shoveled, the leaves raked. Myth number four, staging and depersonalizing isn't that big of a deal. Sometimes I hear from sellers that they prefer their own personal style to that of a staged home or that they feel their home will sell itself. Hmm. Well, that's nice, but you're missing the point. Sellers need to stop looking at their houses as a home and start looking at it like a product to be sold. People aren't coming into your house to look at your nice stuff. They're coming in to look at the space, the amenities, the neighborhood, the potential. To help them best do that, your house should be depersonalized and positioned to attract the eye of your ideal buyer. Your house will sell faster and for more money if you just listen to the professional advice here. And yes, staging does cost money. Like many times in business, you need to spend money to make money. Myth number five, I need to wait until the spring to sell my house. No, no, not really. Sell your house when you need to and you're ready to sell your house. It is true that the greatest number of buyers are actively looking and closing in the spring and early summer, but property sells all year long. We actually have two hot times here in our local Iowa City area real estate market. The first obviously being the spring, which can start as early as February, depending upon the weather, but there's also a nice uptick in listings in the fall and buyer activity holds decent through most of November. December and January can be pretty quiet in terms of buyer activity, but like I mentioned earlier, houses do sell all year round. So if you find yourself in the position of having to list your house for sale in December or January, it is not the end of the world. 
if you have a bit of flexibility with your timing, it, it might be worth it to try to time the market just a little or explore the option of a private listing with your agent. That way you can kind of put feelers out for potential buyers, but not drive up your days on market until you are ready to make your official public debut. One of the benefits of listing your house during a time period other than the spring is that you're just not gonna have that much competition from similar houses. And the buyers that are out there actively looking they don't have a lot to choose from, so they will have to make a high stakes decision when it comes to your house. What kind of home selling advice have you read somewhere or heard from that well-meaning friend or relative? Tell me about it in the comments section down below. Do you have any questions or do you have some suggestions on how to get a house sold quickly and at a great price? Lay them on me. I would love to hear from you. Hey, it's been fun and I'll catch you later.